Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's me, SB. I'm so glad that you are back. So, today's video is about the knitting machine, or the Centro knitting machine in particular. And this video is basically going to be me talking about the three things I wish I knew before I purchased this particular more than a toy magic loom knitting machine. Thing one, it takes skill. Who would have thought that a knitting machine would take any type of skill? Now, the skills that I'm talking about in particular are, are not necessarily knitting skills. They are just skills that relate to the knitting machine itself. And the skills that you really need are casting on, casting off, knowing what to look at, look for, rather, knowing what to look for in dropped stitches, tucked stitches, um, really just attention to detail. I mean, it's really not a skill, but it's something that you don't realize that you need to have for a knitting machine. I mean, in, when I first got it, I thought, oh, I just get some yarn, feed it through, and just start cranking away, and it's automatically going to knit it, and I'm not going to have to do anything, you know? That wasn't the case. Um, I did have to learn how to cast on, how to remove it, remove my knitting fabric from the actual machine, um, how to count the rows or rounds properly. I had to learn how to knit in a panel, in a flat panel if I wanted to. Um, it's just a number of things. I had to learn what this was. Um, in case you didn't know, this is actually a tensioner and you have three different types of tensions. But anyways, that video is not, this video is not a tutorial. So let's go to thing two. <laughs> Thing two is the construction of this. Now, when I purchased this last year, it was like in the middle of last year, I believe. It was around $45 to $48 for the 48-pin uh, knitting machine. These days, it's going from $75 to $80. Now, that's only due to everything that's happening. Um, these are made and manufactured in China. So there's a lot of stuff going around or going on over there right now. And of course, inflation, you know, it just jumped like 100%, it seems like. But that's, that's a whole other story. Um, anyways, it is pretty cheaply made. Um, I've already had to replace a few parts on this. Um, one thing was the legs, but that was my fault. It had nothing to do with the machine itself. I was using clamps to hold it down and I cracked a couple of the legs, so that was my bad. Um, I did wind up replacing this tensioner guide here because my cat broke it. Um, he jumped on it and it snapped off. Also, it did start to get some cracking right here where these screws are. And I think that's from the motion, you know, whenever you're you're cranking, it's kind of rocking back and forth and it started cracking right here. And I did notice some other things like the handle is getting kind of loose and sometimes whenever I wind it, it'll make like a little like clicking noise. So the plastic on this is kind of brittle. Um, you know, it's kind of like a children's toy. They do say it's more than a toy, but it is kind of a kid's toy made purely of plastic. The only thing that's not plastic on here are, I think, uh, the connectors that connect the counter and the screws. Wow, right? Anyways, let's go on to thing three. Okay, thing three is the product 
the way they market the product, this particular knitting machine and every other knitting machine I've noticed out there. Now, if you take a look at this here box, you see here in the corner, so you see here in the corner, it has this really fancy pillow and it looks like a nice cute knitted throw with designs and cables and stuff on there. You really can't achieve those type of things on this machine or really any other machine. I mean, there are ways to do it. I've seen several videos of people accomplishing, uh, you know, like rib, ribbing, um, you know, different types of stitches on there, but it consists of them going through, unpicking, re reloading up the thing, going through doing that. Personally, I'd rather just knit it by hand and get that, achieve that same, you know, look rather than spending my time on this because at least with hand knitting, I can take it with me. I, I don't have to have a desk to set it on. I don't, I just spit a little bit, excuse me. <laughs> Anyways, I don't have to have a desk. I, I can take it with me if I'm on the road, if we're traveling somewhere, I can just pop it in a bag, take my yarn with me and go. As for this, I can't pop it in a bag. You know, I can't carry it with me. You know, don't, sorry, I go off on a tangent. Going back to what we were talking about, the only thing that you can really create with this is a tube. You see this right here is actually most likely made with this machine. The pillow here, probably not. These mittens um, or gloves, maybe, but you would still have to know how to knit to make the thumb. Or you would have to make a flat panel really small, sew it together. This you can definitely make. And these hats are are definitely doable. So yeah, um, overall, I'm happy with it. I mean, I have a lot of fun playing with it. I've made lots of hats. That's pretty much all I've made. I've made some scarves. And that's pretty much it. I've made some flat panels on it. I mean, it's really quick. Don't get me wrong. You really can make a knitted hat in 30 minutes. But you can't make a knitted cable hat in 30 minutes. You could knit it up, take it off, and then unpick stuff and then go back through and do it. You know, there's a lot of videos out there on how to do it. I just, I feel like it's not worth it. You know, why, why take that extra time whenever you can just knit it? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, but once you know all the tips and the tricks, um, it, it's really worth it, I think. Um, oh, bonus. I just remembered one. Not all yarn works in this. Wow. You know, isn't that a surprise? I didn't know that. I didn't know that I couldn't use certain yarns in it. And only certain yarns will just glide through it like butter. Um, one example is Red Heart Super Saver. It tends to not work very well in this machine. But I picked up lots of tips and tricks from YouTube and blogs and stuff on how to make it work. Hence why that weird thing's right there. Um, Karen Simply Soft works really well. I mean, it has to be a really soft yarn. And... I think it has to have like minimal static because the static will stick to this plastic and just, you know, it'll just suck it in and it won't let it do what it needs to do. But yeah, anyways, I've really enjoyed working with this. Um, I've made several things, like I've said, made lots of hats, lots of hats. <laughs> and oh yeah. Shameless plug, I do have some of my hats available in my Etsy shop. SB Creates, the same name as my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in some of those hats or you just want to check out my uh, Etsy shop, there are a few things in there. Maybe you like something, maybe you don't. Just go check it out. You know, you never know. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can go check that out. I hope 
that this video was informative and maybe it'll help you decide if you want to get this cheaper version of a knitting machine or spring for like the $300 knitting machine that is supposed to be way better and I think it has minimal plastic parts. I don't know. It's the Addy knitting machine, I believe. You can go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description to this central machine and the Addy knitting machine so you can compare the two. Uh, yeah, anyways, um, that's it for this video. I just wanted to share my thoughts about the Centro 48 pin knitting machine. And be on the lookout for a few more videos with this machine. I uh, probably won't do a whole lot because they're all pretty much the same. You know, cast on, crank, cast off, pull, so done. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye!